All right, this is Damien here with Big AZ Speakers. Today we're starting out in my garage, doing a little different video than the normal uh, uh, demo of speakers and stereos. But if you had an issue like me, uh, you may recognize these uh, Pioneer 6 disc changers. So I got, this is just a small example, but this is a pile of broken CD players couple of cassettes in there but um, I actually have probably about 20 of these pioneers different models uh, variations of the six disc changers but these have the cartridges that were really neat because you could load up a six disc cartridge put it in your home uh, pioneer CD player but then also put it in your pioneer car uh, CD changer and be on your way so you could organize you know you could uh, collect you know uh, different uh, cartridges and start uh, putting together your music collection into uh, six disc uh, cartridges and label them that way and take them on the go or have them at home. So it's really kind of the first step in, uh, you know, bringing portable music along. You know, today we have our phones, plug them into our home stereos, take them in our car, put them in our uh, player MP3s on our car uh, stereo. And so, you know, this kind of first generation of that concept now the reason I'm showing you this is almost every bad review I've had on a sale has almost resulted in CD players being damaged in shipping and these pioneers which I don't know why I've always had a fondness and affection for them have been the Keeley's heel for my business and it's always one simple little issue and I want to go go through, and I have one. It's actually a Denon version, but it's the same uh, same unit, and it has the same issue. So I want to show you that. So if you have an issue with CDs not reading on these Pioneer CD players, take a look, and I'll show you what more often than not is the problem. So let me pause this real quick. Here's a couple more same same things. The Pioneers usually start out with a PD hyphen and then an M. Like this is the M603 here, M501, M403. And there's a, I have a Pioneer Elite one, which actually has a different issue, which is kind of an oddity. But uh, nonetheless, like I said, this is typically going to be your issue. All right, so now we're in the kitchen. We're looking at this Denon. Again, it's the same... Uh, same changer, but this the model number on this is a DCM777. Real pretty unit. Got a nice display. Again, I work a lot at night, so don't get the best lighting opportunities here. But uh here's what the cartridges look like. So again, six discs. One thing to keep in mind, uh, sometimes you can get a no disc read error just because one fatal mistake of the uh, lasers are actually mounted upside down. And on the top of the uh, tray assembly here, so you gotta put your CDs in upside down. And I also have a tray, note how they say Pioneer, um, where it's a single disc, and that's what I have loaded in here now. So just uh, but I can pull the whole tray out if I want to. And then I could. Put one of the six disc cartridges in, and then when I hit play, so right now it's going through all six discs, trying to find one. As you saw, there were some CDs loaded in there. And then it moves pretty fast, and now it's on the last disc, and get all zeros. So I'll hit play again. Nothing. Well maybe I got some bad discs in there. So let's uh try a different CD. Again putting it upside down. Go ahead and hit play. Oh, there's my zeros. So I'm going to pause it real quick, open up the case, and we'll take a look and see what's going on in there. 
Now, you may have a different version, whether you've got the Pioneer or the Denon, or even Realist or Optimus, I've seen copied this model. So you may have different tray assembly, and the motor uh, mounts may look different, but the same issue is the same. So if you can kind of get the concept on this one, you'll be able to diagnose if this is your issue as well. And then we'll show you how to fix it. All right, so now we're inside the Denon, or in your case, probably looking at your Pioneer. And funny thing is, if you look at the board on this one, it's got Denon. And we have some Sony parts in here somewhere. We have some Sony chips. Toshiba. So it's a whole smorgasbord of different chips. But, again, that's not where our issue really you know, typically lies. So, here's our motor mount assembly. Now, usually these, there's a little... There's four screws here, so two off to the side here, and then two up front. They got these little mounts. Those are usually always bad, but that's not typically your issue. So, you know, right now we, we're not even reading a disc, so I'm not so much looking into that. But, you know, this may be something that, that uh, would need to be addressed in the future. Now, if they make these exact for this part, uh, for this model, you're not probably not going to get lucky, but uh, you know there's different types of of mounts that you can fabricate or, or buy that would uh, resolve this for you and just keep the, the motor steady. But I haven't had any issues even with the mounts being loose as far as reading discs and things like that when I have a working unit. So I'm going to undo these four screws and I'll be right back. All right, so I got the four screws out, and in case you're wondering what they look like. There you go. They're all identical, so just as long as you keep the four together, you don't have to worry what order you put a, took them out or anything like that. So there's enough slack in these wires. There's a, on some models you're gonna have to undo the ground wire in order to be able to flip this out, and some there's a little bit more to the process of removing this. But on this specific version, it's pretty, pretty simple. So I'm simply gonna pull it out. I'm gonna flip it upside down. And for those of you who have seen us inside CD player before, maybe your old uh, Discman, this is the, uh, you know, through that hole is your, your laser. So if you notice anything missing, it's missing the focus lens. And that's the issue with these, with these six disc changers, is this one actually looks like it had a little more glue applied than any of the pioneers I've seen, and it still gave out. So I think part of it is obviously the you know the age of the unit, but you know, typically it's just a little tiny speck of glue that was holding it in the first place. And then the fact that it's mounted upside down, where most CD players your laser is mounted this direction, but this one's upside down. You know, so it has gravity working against it for all those years, and it falls out. So I've shipped so many of these darn players working and the focus lens falls out and so you know obviously especially if you sell them like eBay you know eBay customers are skeptical a lot of times to begin with and so when they get a CD player that says it works perfect and it arrives not working you know their their disappointment and rightfully so you know is, is they think they got duped so I just want to show you kind of what we're dealing with and something I started doing I've, I've pretty much ceased sales of CD players in general because they just can't survive FedEx or UPS setting the boxes down hard. I mean, there's other internal parts, you know, even on this unit that has a lot of metal, you know, even the gears are still plastic. And, you know, I can protect the outside all day long, protect the face, but you drop a box down hard, it may not even damage the box, but the insides, uh, something gets, you know, misaligned or, they get it and the tray won't open or something stupid like that. And it just, it gets costly because it costs, you know, I'm in Arizona. If I'm shipping this to, let's say, New York, because a lot of my customers are on the East Coast or in the Midwest and in Florida, you know, that's uh, $35 shipping that I'm going to have to reimburse them. And then if I want the unit back, I'm going to have to pay another $35 to get it back. And maybe I only sold the thing for $50, sometimes 100 depending on the model. And... So it's, it's a loss altogether. And 
you know, it's gotten so bad that some of these CD players, it's a 50-50 chance if it's going to arrive working. So one thing to improve the uh, chance of survival for this is I pull the focus lens out during my test and I re-glue it. Now, it is something that you have to be kind of delicate with because if you, you know, just a speck of dust on that lens can cause it to not read. So imagine working with glue around there. You get a little string of glue across the top or your fingerprints on there or anything like that. You know, you're going to have a malfunction unit that maybe was working just fine. But what I do go do is if, let's say, the focus lens in there, I get my little tweezers and I be careful not to touch the face. And I reach in there and I, uh, I pull the lens out. You'll notice it pops right out super easy. And so then I, I set that aside. Then I'll take a toothpick and I'll put a little bit of my model glue on the end of the toothpick and I go in there ever so gently and and dab on the side. And I take my same tweezers and I put the focus lens back in. Now I show you how I do it on this one, but I have to track down a focus lens. Unfortunately this unit arrived to me missing lens altogether. Usually you can find it rolling around inside the the uh, CD uh, inside the cabinet here but sometimes it'll fall fall out through here, you know, depending on how long it's been floating around in there. So a lot of times people are curious at what's rattling around, and so they shake it until it falls out. And they're like, oh, what's that? And it doesn't, you know, so by the time I get it, it's not existent. So I've had enough of these that luckily I got some spare parts. I'd like to probably keep this denim for myself. And uh, make sure at the end, so I'm going to fix like. it. And Go from there but thank you for tuning in please post any uh, questions I tried to rush this along but hopefully you got the the main uh, the nitty-gritty that you need now one thing I, I overstepped was hopefully you're able to remove the uh, lid but on this model and most others there's gonna be two on each side two screws that is that you know, typically look about like this and then there's usually one to two in the back uh, either they're going to be mounted up top or up top or on the sides and just make sure you keep all those together but if you can't figure out how to undo the lid maybe you probably should forfeit uh, trying to repair the lens so uh, it's not overly difficult but you know you have to have some some uh, mechanical skills you know probably very low level but you know for some people you know, it may be a little more difficult and steady hands. And like I said, a good pair of tweezers, some toothpicks and me, model glue, super glue work fine. Something that sets fast is what I recommend. And that can be good and bad. Like I said, if you get glue in a place that you don't want it, um, you know, you might cost yourself a, a lens, but, um, you know, out of the, I've probably repaired 20 of these and I've probably messed up two of them. Sometimes I get careless or, or move along too fast, but you know, I'm blessed with having extra parts. If uh, I only had one, I would definitely not be uh, careless or, or moving too fast. So anyways, thank you for tuning in. Uh, please like if this helped you. Uh, post your comments. If there's something I could have done better, let me know. Again, I'm not a professional, just an enthusiast. I do own a, a, speakers, a speaker store, bigazspeakers.com. But I run everything out of my house and almost purely e-commerce, so I really take pride in shipping uh, speakers, large speakers that are hard to get delivered uh, to your door. Obviously, I got a lot of audio equipment as a result, but here I'll pan and show you what, my, what I've done in my living room and my wife. Oh, this light's not helping. It's a mess in here right now, but this is what it looks like in the middle of the night. Usually I'm working, but... As you can see, I got big AZ speakers and audio gear all over. So, you know, I've taken over the coffee table as my workbench. I do have space in the garage too, but uh, sometimes that gets overrun depending on how much stuff I get in. And also, I do uh, climate control the garage, but it still gets kind of hot in there in the summer. So, I keep all my good stuff inside, and that's just something that that my wife has supported me on. But um, I know sometimes it can be overwhelming. Luckily, we got enough room that I was able to utilize one of these rooms. But uh, there's a sneak peek at, at what we got. And 
Thank you for tuning in. And uh, again, I look forward to hearing your comments. Thank you.